ओके सो वी आर डूइंग श्रीमद भगवतम कैंटो इलेवन पार्ट टू चैप्टर ट्वेंटी सिक्स वी हैड कंप्लीटेड अप टू वर्स थर्टीन नाउ दिस इज अ स्टोरी ऑफ किंग पुरुरावा एंड दिस चैप्टर इज कॉल्ड द आयला गीता नाउ किंग पुरुरावा इज टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ ही वॉज कंप्लीटली डिल्यूडेड बाय अ वुमन हुम ही हैड कंप्लीटली सरेंडर्ड टू एंड शी हैज डिस्ट हिम एंड शी इज गॉन अवे सो ही इज ruing why she is left and he is talking about the kind of things that would have happened with her and how he wasted his life so this is the chapter called aila gita uh, we are doing canto 11 part 2 shrimad bhagavatam chapter 26 the aila gita verse 14 onwards even after i had served the so called nectar of the lips of urvashi for many years my lusty desires kept rising again and again within my heart and were never satisfied just like a fire that can never be extinguished by the oblation of ghee poured into its flame so the king is talking about how he wasted his life every time when we think about our own life what are we actually running after we are running off lust and greed two most important things for any person in this world and lust is an important component which drives a man towards his destiny more and more the idea that we have to meet someone in life and then to set up family and so on and so forth is an accepted fact by everybody in this world today everybody thinks that yes when i grow up i need to find a man of my dreams or a woman of my dreams and then get on with the life with her and then him now her and him both we have to see that and then have a family get married and have a family and then children and you know this is exactly how everybody has been thinking and you may say that this institution called marriage it is recent recent may not be too recent but it is definitely recent the institution was created because of a very important term that term that word is called desire the desire to own something the desire to be a part of some atmosphere some place some environment the desire for ownership of all kinds of stuff whether it is man or object you name it and that is the reason why this institution called marriage came into existence i am sure many of you have seen movies I, you may not remember what you did 10000 bc okay but i can definitely say there are lots of creative film directors who have portrayed what might have happened in 10000 bc yeah there are lots of people in a commune as it happens in a commune you keep on circulating imagine this is exactly what the animals do don't they there is no focus on any particular individual till you feel the need of focusing on that individual or the person or that particular being and then the idea of a desire comes into the picture this desire drives a man towards ownership of things you know how a person wants to own something oh i want this person to be mine and the moment you say i want to own this person yeah you have already sanctioned yourself a lot of problems in life because imagine that other individual if it if that individual looks outside then what happens then you have a big problem on hand isn't it so the institution of marriage is a recent origin it is not very ancient it is not ancient at all some people who believe that they they can say in terms of morality and various other things i when you have to think in terms of ownership of any person then the idea that i have to be secure comes into the picture isn't it i want security why 
because I don't want the ownership of that object to leave me and go somewhere else. Isn't that correct? Isn't it like the ownership of any item in your world? Whether it is a gold bangle or a car or a two-wheeler. Now, if you leave your two-wheeler outside some place and somebody comes and picks it up and goes away, you know how big trouble you may be in. So, this is exactly what I meant. You want to have the ownership of that object and that person as well. And because of this ownership, we get into big troubles. Spirituality teaches us that we cannot own anything in this world. We cannot own anything in this world. Why should we own any object? First, they don't belong to you. Even a mother, when she takes the ownership of a child, just because the child has come from her womb, she thinks that she owns it. It's not important. Today, the age of surrogate babies, who can take ownership of the baby? The womb belongs to somebody else. The sperm belongs to somebody else. The egg belongs to someone else. And once the baby comes out of the womb, it is given to adoption to someone else. Now you think about it, then who is the father and the mother? Do you think the person who has provided the sperm is the owner? You can't take ownership of any object in this world today. Just because you have paid money for some thing, do you think you own that object? So this is where the problem of ownership comes into play and spirituality teaches you don't own anything in this world. If you don't own anything in this world, then you are not going to lose it. It's a simple logic, isn't it? If you don't own anything, you are anyway not going to lose that object because it doesn't belong to you. And if it doesn't belong to you and you are losing that object, would you care? No. If your neighbor loses his bike or his car, are you bothered about it? No, you are not bothered about it. You say, you'll just feel sorry for that guy. You're a poor fellow. He must have bought a new car and he lost it. <laughs> That's the only thing that can happen. Now, the thing is, idea that we need to own something and we need to be bothered about that individual creates this problem. So, desire is the root cause. King Pururava is saying, even after I have served the so-called nectar of the lips of Urvashi for many years. That means, this man was definitely involved in sexual activities with Urvashi. Now, Urvashi, if you remember, I had told you, she is the uh, celestial prostitute. Basically, somebody who serves all the gods. Hmm? Now, because her job is that, okay, I have to correct you over here where the term prostitute comes into play. And especially, the I think the women will be happy when I say what I am going to say just now. Think about it. There is a one woman and she sleeps around with 100 people. Naturally, she is called by that term prostitute. But is the same spoken about a man? A man, one man may go and sleep with 100 people. Why is he not called that? Think about it. A man is never called like that. A man is supposed to be beyond all these things. Oh, he is supposed to do everything. So, think about it like that. This king, this king, I am sure King Pururava must have had a harem of more than 1000 women. Okay? I am sure about it. And yet, Urvashi is called by a name. Whereas, he is not called by anything. See the whole point of it? Yeah, it's a different story that now he's going to turn a new leaf, okay? Then, then the whole thing will go away. Okay, let us see what happens. So, he is used to all kinds of sexcapades, you know, sexcapades, okay? He's talking about enjoying the nectar of the lips of Urvashi, okay? For many years, my lusty desires kept rising again and again within my heart. What are these lusty desires? The lusty desires which basically it is sexual in nature. So, he is interested in sex, having sex with this lady continuously. And then what happens to him? 
and was never satisfied. The idea called satisfaction in sex is never there. Please understand this. A man and a woman may have love making. They do that, it gets over. The desire rises at the next few minutes. I want to have again. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. Do you think it ever goes away? No. And it is like a continuous thing. So I am going to slightly move away from this text and move to another text which I teach. Now this is a story which I am talking about is from a book called Tripura Rahasyam. There is this prince. This prince once he gets lost into the jungles and he meets a very beautiful girl out there. She is alone at home. I mean there is a small hut and she is the daughter of a, the rishi over there. Her name is Hem Lekha and the boy, the prince's name is Hem Chuda. So when Hem Lekha sees this person Hem Chuda, she welcomes him in the house because he is lost. This boy, this man, this prince, he falls in love with her instantly. She is beautiful and she is alone, she is in the jungle. Think about all these things, you know, uh, important tick points to be ticked off. Alone, single, in the jungle, nobody around. Of course, you know what all talks in your mind. So naturally, he falls in love with her. It's a very mild word, okay, falling in love. Well, then he goes and he meets her father, the Rishi Muni and says, I want to marry her. And he marries her and takes her to be the princess. You know, when, when you have a princess, I am sure you know now everybody is excited about Meghan Markle. Huh? The, what dresses she is wearing. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> the beautiful dresses that she is wearing and the purse she is carrying and the way she goes around in the public. Everybody is following her. From Instagram to Twitter to everything, people will definitely follow. The question is who is paying for her dresses, isn't it? But she has said she pays for them. Anyway, that's a sidelight. Coming back to our story once again. So this princess goes to live with this prince. And now he has made a very beautiful castle for her. Yeah, just like the Disney world, no? in that Disney castle. And then it so happens that he is enjoying his life with her. Now, enjoyment after marriage is all about sex. Okay. 24 bar 7, they are only thinking of one thing. Okay. So, here he is enjoying. So, one day, the wife says, No. This man gets very upset. And he gets very upset. And he doesn't know what to do. And again, she says, No. You know, if you say no 2-3 times, you know that person's temperatures are going to shoot through the roof. So, naturally, Hem Chuda gets very upset about the whole issue. Then he asks her, what is this nonsense that you are saying? What do you mean no? So, is anything wrong with you? She says, nothing is wrong with me, but no. So, the question that he asks is, see, I am a handsome guy. Yeah, yeah, he looked very good, of course. I have got a castle, I have got money, I have got slaves, I have got everything in the world. Oh, most important is virility, okay? I don't, you can't say I am not a virile person. Yeah, I am, I am very good at all those things also. Then what is wrong? I mean, why are you saying no to me? So she asks him a simple question. She says, um, do you know? that the most important act that you are talking about happens at a place where the dirtiest of the liquids and solids keep on coming out. <laughs> Urine, pus, blood, you name it, all kinds of dirty stuff. And you seem to like those places a lot. Wow! You know, if you think about this, you should be... You know, the moment you think about urine, pus and blood and, you know, shit and all that. Oh my God! I'm sure, you know, you are not going to look at that place. 
And what is this that you keep on liking about it so much? This man gets totally demotivated by these words. Can you imagine somebody saying like this? He gets completely, you know, fizzled out. He says, okay. I will do one thing. I'll just go and sit somewhere. So he goes to another castle and he sits over there closing all the doors. You know, sex is performed with the worst possible places on earth. The objects, the, the organs that we use and imagine man runs after this so much. He enjoys it by the way. Have you seen a pig rolling in the shit? Okay, you have seen, no? How do you like that? You can imagine here this man is rolling exactly in that. Naturally, that thought should up, you know, come in the mind of a person, but it doesn't come, by the way. You know that, no? He says, my lusty desires kept rising again and again, and it doesn't stop. It keeps on rising again and again. And it was never satisfied. He is never satisfied. It's like the fire that can never be extinguished by the oblations of the grief poured on into its flames. That means what? The mind is a very, very important object over here. What does it do? You know, your mind can be a very dicey creature. It can show you things which it wants you to see. Who is this you? The you is the lower self. The lower self wants to see all the good stuff. Now, suppose you are cooking something, maybe you are making, you are baking a cake and the cake gets burnt. Would you like to see the burnt cake or would you like to see something really good? Of course, you want to see some something good, you know. If it, if it is burnt, you know what? You can hide it by means of <laughs> all the cream and everything. Yeah, you can garnish it with whatever you want and hide it away. End of the day, nobody sees what they are eating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and cut it and give it. So, it's exactly like that. We are always bothered about the good stuff. We are never bothered about that which appears dirty, horrible or bad. Hmm? So, here, it's exactly like that. You are driven, driven, the person is driven by that object so much that there is nothing in this world the mind cannot hide. The mind is very good at hiding stuff. You know how good it is at hiding stuff? I am sure you have seen a lot of things happening in this world. If you want your mind to see something bad, just, just think, if you want your mind to see something bad, did I say the mind wants to see something bad? No, I never said like that. I said, if you want. So, who is the controller in this? You are the mind. So, you are the controller of the mind. But if the mind wants to show you something, who is the controller? The mind, of course, isn't it? There are two ways of looking at it. If you can control the mind, then you can do what you want. But if the mind controls you, what happens? You lose your sanity. Correct? Then nothing will appear to you the way you want it to appear. So, let us come to this. So, the mind creates an illusion, an object which is illusory. Remember, this story is of a king, Pururava and Urvashi. And this story is about normal people. It is not about some great king somewhere and some, uh, you know, celestial damsel. There is nothing. We are talking about our normal life also. So, this you have to apply it to your normal life. So, the mind can create illusions for us. All kinds of illusions. And the same object that you think is bad will appear good. And if it is good, it can appear bad by the mind. Isn't it? And it can pour ghee. Ghee in the fire means you can keep on rubbing salt on the wound if you want to make it bad, right? Or the other way around. You can make that sweeter also. Whichever way you look at it. Who but the Supreme Personality of Godhead who lies beyond material perception is the Lord of the self-satisfied sages? 
can possibly save my consciousness which has been stolen by a prostitute. See, he is calling her a prostitute. The story is about us. So, let us think about it from this point of view. Here, King Pururava is saying, you know, I was running after this woman for doing all those kinds of you know, uh, sexual activities. Why should I be bothered about it? Finally, at the end of the day, who is the one who can give me satisfaction? So, the person who can give me satisfaction is the Supreme Self. Just two minutes ago, I told you about something. I said, if I want my mind to see, isn't it? So that the one who can tell you how your mind works is called the higher self. Higher self, alright? You have two selves, the lower self and the higher self. The lower self comprises of mind, body and senses and the higher self is the one which comprises of the godly nature of yours. The goodness that is there within you. Now, when you are looking at both these things, the higher self is connected to the upper domain of goodness. And the lower self will always show you the negativity, the things where you can fall down, you can keep on doing all kinds of wrong stuff and it is going to hide things from you. It is going to create situations where you may be given a very, very wrong picture. That is what the lower self does. The higher self gives you the clarity, the truth in life. And do you think truth is palatable? Many a time truth is not palatable. You don't like the truth. You, you know, it's, it's a very simple thing. There is this lady called Gal Gadot. I am sure you know. I can't call her a pretty woman. She is a wonder woman, pretty woman. Okay. You know, just two days ago, we had a great scientist who died. Now, Stephen Hawking died and she just wrote and that must have been written with goodness at heart. It was not written with anything bad. The only thing which she mentioned is now he can walk. The way she put it, it meant that earlier he could not walk. He was confined to a chair and now he can walk and do something with his and search for more stuff. And that created so much of problem in this world that people started calling her all kinds of things. So, it is not about disability. What she was saying was that the ability, not disability. Now, do you see how the mind takes things in a negative way? I am sure you see the mind always loves to take the negative out of it. If you really want to see something bad in this world, you can... Trash a person and you can see everything bad about that person. Isn't that true? If you really want to see good about a person, it's an extremely difficult task. To move towards goodness is very tough, believe me. But to fall down in life is very easy. If you really want to see some bad aspect of a person, go on the downward spiral and see. Just one bad thing. And the whole thing looks bleak. Everything looks bad. So, in this world, we need to always look upwards. Look at that bird sitting on top of the tree. The bird which is sitting on top of the tree, in, in the Upanishads it's written that there are two birds sitting on a tree. The bird which is on top is called the higher self. The bird which is at the bottom is called the lower self. The lower self we just now discussed, it is about mind, body and senses. A mind, body and senses can show you all the downside of life. Every downside of life that you wish to see. Let us say, now, uh, since uh, Taruja has joined today, so I just give you an example. Today, the thing is, if you want to make the best of the videos, what is the equipment that you wish to have? You know, you can say, oh, I want an Ariflex camera. An Ariflex camera costs 5 crore rupees. You know, all those equipments, the lighting has to be like this. Yeah, the higher end is there. Can you do with what you have? Isn't that what we are saying? You have to make do with what we have. Why are you trashing that thing? So, always use what you have. So, in this world also, we have to always look at the good aspects of life. So, what is this that makes us look at the good aspects of life? The goodness of heart. 
and the goodness of heart is connected to this bird sitting on top. That is called the higher self and the higher self is connected to the super self. That is, there is a bigger self that is there and this bigger self, the one higher, better is called in other terms an aspect of God. We call it God because we are just talking about goodness. So he says, who but the supreme personality of Godhead who lies beyond the material perception. See, this is a material perception, this is a higher perception. He is the Lord of the self-satisfied sages. Do you remember in the previous verse, I told you something about desires? Desires come and they destroy your life. If you have a desire for some object, you will go and run after it and destroy yourself. Please believe me. One of them, like since we are discussing the Ayla Gita, one of them is ownership of a man or a woman. The moment you start that ownership, you are going to get into very big trouble because the object going away from you or the object leaving you or the object trying to do something creates a lot of problems in our world because we want ownership of that object and this ownership causes a lot of problems and desire is the root cause of all these things. So did you get that? The sages, spirituality tells us don't have any ownership of anything. Please do not try to own any object. Have you seen all the sadhus, all these uh, sage Sages and all that, Sai Babas and you know Ram Krishna Paramahansa, Jesus, you name them, all the big people. Do they have ownership of anything? Not a single object. They can't even say, This is my cup. No, they won't even say that. Yeah, they, they may be given a separate cup, but they are not going to have ownership of that. If you ask them, they will say, I don't own anything. And because they don't own anything, if anything goes away from them, do they care for it? No, they don't care for it. So they are what we call as self-satisfied. They are satisfied in their higher self. The lower self is all about mind, body and senses. The senses always keep on going outwards. no? Hmm? The mind keeps on roaming here and there. The mind wants to own things huh? and this is the way everybody loses their peace of mind. The sages don't lose their peace of mind is because they don't own anything. What do they do with their mind? They look inwards. It is called self-satisfaction inwards. So they go inwards and are satisfied within themselves. If I have to ask a question, how much money do you think is sufficient in this world for you? Can you answer that question? The answer will not be one. You know you are going to come out with so many answers you cannot even imagine. Today if you think to uh, have a hundred thousand is difficult, you will say I want hundred thousand. But tomorrow when you have hundred thousand, what will you say? I want a million. And when you have a million, what will you say? I want a billion. When you have a billion, what will you say? I want a trillion. Does it get over? No. The satisfaction never comes. The sage is satisfied in what he gets. Have you seen? He is just like a bird. You see the birds? Do you think the bird goes and stores grains for tomorrow, day after tomorrow and day after? No, no. The bird goes out, looks for the feed. Whenever the bird is hungry, it will eat that and it's not going to store. Human beings love to gather stuff. Their desire is to keep it and they are always having paucity of everything. Everything is less in their world. Think. You know, a farmer may farm and if he gets five bags of grain, he will say, Last year I got 10. This year I am getting only 5. That is less. See? There is nobody who is satisfied in life. Except the sages. And the sages are always very particular about this. They are not bothered about things outside. They are bothered inside. And because they are bothered inside, 
they are always self satisfied so did you understand lord of self satisfied sages who is it those who are satisfied with their self their own self the s e l f is capital s the lower self just now you remember the lower self and the higher self the lower self is always looking for things is dissatisfied has desires at heart the higher self is satisfied within itself so this satisfied self which is there is in direct connect with the divine so guru rava is saying over here who but the supreme personality of godhead who lies beyond material perceptions is the lord of the self satisfied sages can possibly save my consciousness which has been stolen by a woman why is this thing happening to me me he is saying pururava is saying to himself i am running after a petty object called a woman what is this how stupid that can be actually i should have been running the kingdom you understand he is a king remember he is a king what is a king supposed to do he should supposed to run his kingdom he is supposed to manage it properly but in his world if he gives precedence to a woman then what happens to him everything goes to ruin there are lots of people who come to me in in my world and they will say you know guru ji i have a problem with my wife i have a problem with my husband i have a problem with this one my girlfriend my boyfriend all this everybody comes some people have problem with their children what is the answer the answer is simply this you are focusing on things which are going to disturb you if you are going to be having a desire that your son should be with you or your daughter should behave in a particular manner or your boyfriend has to be like this or your girlfriend has to be that way or my husband should be faithful to me or my wife should be faithful to me what are all these questions aren't they the primary thing in your world you have put that as priority number 1 you understand priority number 1 should always be what can i do with my life not what can i do with my wife okay <laughs> not the other way around what can i do with my life i am here in this world not because i have to produce a, you know a plethora of children you know 10 children at one time sorry i am not here because of that i am here because god has sent me in this world to do something really spectacular the moment you give yourself this i can do anything in this world do you know you will then do something about it otherwise a man a woman a girl a boy children they can destroy your life because your mind is going to get attracted towards that nonsensical stuff and it all starts with ownership desire correct and there is nothing called love in this world let me tell you something when people say i am in love with someone or someone is in love with me i am sorry they are telling lies to you nobody is in love with anyone okay we call love unconditional can i put a condition and then say oh you have to only love me this love in this world the word love has been misused and it is petty if the children don't love the parents then the parents don't like it isn't that true if the boyfriend doesn't love the girlfriend she doesn't like it if the girl doesn't love the boy she, he doesn't like it but if that person wants to do what he wants to do or what she wants to do is in that love called conditional love that okay i i don't want him to do this i don't want her to do that so this world in this world the word love is misused so then who are in who are you in love with do you know who you are in love with the answer is your own self you see if i try to put you under water are you not going to save yourself right do you remember the story of that monkey okay i will tell you so there is a monkey 
all right and she has got children you know, have you seen the monkey and the child how it clutches it like this the baby clutches the monkey and goes now it so happens that the monkey is caught in a flood all right the monkey is caught in a flood and when the monkey is caught in a flood what does the monkey do it climbs on top of the branch or that um, building and slowly the water rises and when the water rises the monkey takes the child and puts it on top of the body over here tries to save it and then slowly the water rises more and more so the monkey will put the child on top of the head over here the monkey mother when the water comes up to here what happens the monkey mother takes the child puts it under her feet and climbs up that's what happens so finally who is in love with whom so did you get the point even a mother when it is her life is at stake she will first put her life in number one position please remember this is not about a mother it's about every person in this world every person is in love with their own self first if something happens to you if you if you break your leg if something happens to your heart you name it whatever that may happen are you not worried about it you are worried about your own self if you fall down if you are meeting with an accident are you not worried about your own life 100% and that is called the lower self you are bothered about your lower self is something going wrong if you cut yourself you know oh my god i cut myself oh my god how much you will make you know racket if something happens to you if you lose your hair okay or if you put on 5 kg extra you know what you are going to get into very big trouble right at that time are you bothered about the other person no so remember the first thing is the selfish motive is i love myself more than anybody else in this world so the term love is a misnomer in this world nobody loves another person okay please remember this first nobody loves another person it is conditional love to love another person is conditional love the person is getting money is giving love is having sex is doing all kinds of thing that is the only reason why that person is in love conditional love is what we do in this world even a mother child relationship i just now proved it to you that is the truth so whom are you bothered about your own self and this self is always bothered about his lower being i want to dress nicely i want to look good i want to do this i want to do that there is a singer who is 74 years old and he is he is going around with a 24 year old girl you should look at the way he tries to you know put his face and all that why is he trying to do that because he is in love with himself not with that 24 year old girl no nobody is in love with 24 year old he is in love with himself he wants to look good remember this so you are in love with your own being number 1 number 2 that is a selfish love again you know how selfish it is suppose you develop all those white marks huh? leucoderma what do you call it i think then what happens you want to hide it by makeup if there is a problem in your world have you not seen people like michael jackson and all what they used to do to cover their bodies up paint the entire body up isn't it you have seen a lot of people in this world who do that then do you love yourself if you lose your eyesight no you want somebody else's eyesight if you have a weak heart why am i having this heart so then what happens then you are going to be full of desires again in your own being isn't it i want somebody else's heart i want somebody else's eyes i want somebody else's looks have you not seen instagram filled with all those people who want to pump their asses with whatever fluid i don't know what and want to look rotund and all that oh come on what kind of nonsense people will do what kind of enhancement surgeries people do kind of looks that they 
you know, the horriblest of the looking person has got a makeup tutorial. Have you seen the makeup tutorials? Yeah, they will do this, that and they will make themselves so beautiful looking. If you see them in sleep when the makeup is off, you know, you will get scared. Isn't that the truth? So, please understand one thing. You will be scared with these kind of people. It's only when you see the makeup. So, everybody wants to be that beautiful. So, did you see that you start hating yourself because you are not that beautiful? So, did you get the point? So, first, you don't like the other person because it is conditional love. Second, you started liking yourself but you start hating yourself the moment you age in your life, the moment you put on weight, the moment you start losing your hair, the moment you lose shape of your body, you don't like it. You want to be somebody else. So, that love is also flimsy. Did you see that? The love for your own body also is flimsy. Then where can you find true love? The true love can be found only within the self. And this self is without desire. The inner self, that is the one which is called the higher self. The higher self is not expecting anything out of you. You know when you do something wrong with your own body, does the higher self tell you something wrong? No. The higher self is always kind to you. You may have done the worst thing on planet earth. You might have robbed, you might have cheated, you might have done all kinds of wrong stuff in this world. But the higher self inside of you is always forgiving, is always kind, compassionate. And this higher self is called God. So, there is a God within you who always in love with you. So, why are you not in love with that God? Can you not love your own self, the higher self more? And this higher self is what these yogis do. They are in love with their innermost being. And this being is without any demands. It doesn't have any demands whatsoever. Did you get the point? It is free. Isn't this same innermost being telling you, can you focus on your career? Can you take care of yourself? Can you, you can do anything in this world. Isn't that the higher self always telling you this? You can do anything in this world. You can beat even Bill Gates to his fortune. Can, is the higher self not telling you this? It is telling you, you are unique. There is no other person like you. I love you so much. You are capable of anything in this world. You can perform whatever you want to. The most dangerous acts to the most beautiful acts also you can do. And you can be your good self. Just don't try to be an ugly person. Just be your good self. This innermost being is telling you constantly. And this innermost being is one with the divine. So, this king Pururava is thinking like this. He says, I have been in love with a petty woman. Now, Urvashi, remember, is called the celestial prostitute. Okay, she is called. Her job is to satisfy everybody. So, you think she is going to keep quiet with one man, Pururava? No. She wants to go meet Indra. She wants to go and meet all the other gods that are there and all the handsome dudes in this world. That is her job and she does it. What is wrong in what she is doing? She is doing only her duty. She is programmed for that. Isn't it? Now, there, there may be some doubts in your mind, but let me correct them for you. Since we are talking about an object over here, do you know there are lots of people who buy sex dolls? Isn't it? Can you expect the sex doll to perform another action besides sex? No, no. You think the sex doll is going to cook your food for you? No. Do you think she is going to tell you, ah, now you are going to office, I will give you this, oh you are doing... No, nothing like that. She is not bothered about whether your career is going to be good or this or that, no. Her job is that. 
So please remember, everybody is born for a particular purpose. So Urvashi was born for the purpose of satisfying sexual needs. And that is what she was good at. And she was doing that. And Pururava was getting upset because she was performing her duties. So is she wrong in doing what she is doing? No, that is her job. But Pururava was mistaken because he started desiring her. And when you desire something and you don't get it, then you get into trouble. That is what happened to him. And that is the reason why he was falling down in life. Because I allowed my intelligence to become dull. And because I failed to control my senses, the great confusion in my mind did not go away. Even though Urvashi herself gave me wise counsel with well-spoken words. Remember, Urvashi is a very, very smart woman. She is a celestial nymph. Okay? She is always in company of the gods. She is telling him, it's my job. I am doing a fantastic job as a prostitute. Okay? I have to serve only one purpose. They have made me only for this purpose. I am a sex doll for them. Okay? That's it. But I can give fantastic advice to you. So, Pururava is saying, you see, as a human being, I got attached to this person. Okay, My eyes were always following her around. My ears were only listening to whatever good things that she was saying. My mouth was only interested in kissing her and doing all kinds of you know, things which are necessary. My, all my body parts were clinging to her. So he says, because of which what happened? My senses were taken away by her. Now is it the senses were taken away by her or is it that he was running after her? See, there are two things. A bottle of liquor is not going to say drink me. Correct? Does the bottle of liquor say drink me? No, no. It doesn't say drink me. A, a pack of cigarettes, does it say smoke me? It says smoking is injurious to health. <laughs> it can cause you cancer. Doesn't it say that? So, the same way the bottle of liquor is actually not tempting you, it's not saying come to me, come to me, come to me. No, it is you who is going towards that object. It is the person who is going and picking up that cigarette. It is the person who is interested in having sex. It is not that the object is bad. Do you get the point? The object has its own characteristics. Liquor has a correct characteristics of intoxicating a person. You know that. A smoking cigarette has got a habit. It, it can create this habit of nicotine. Okay. A woman, um, that means a sex object. A woman or a man can create this object of come to me. I want to have sex with you. That's what it can say to you. But it is in whose hand to say no? So it's in your hand to say no. You can look at the bottle and still say no to it. The bottle can tempt you. Not necessary to go into that. A pack of cigarettes can tempt you. But not necessary to go and smoke it. A drug. You know, people are crazy about drugs. The drug people are going to sell the drugs and it's not necessary to go and buy them. You don't have to become an addict. Same way, an object of sex is going to tempt you towards sex. But it is not necessary to fall into that. So, the senses are drawn towards it. It is not that the object is coming towards you. It is the senses are going towards that object. Our senses go towards that object. Secondly, see, he is saying, fail to control my senses. And because I fail to control my senses, my mind took over. How does the mind take over? You know, the mind says, if a person likes to drink, you know what he will say? Just one small glass will do. And after that, maybe I'll have another one. After that, maybe another one. Then, maybe another one. You know what? It never stops. Same way a cigarette. The person who keeps on smoking, I am giving up today. Oh, what? I will have the last one and then I'll give up. Sir, the last one never happens. Do you know in therapy, when people go for these therapies, the drug addiction and all or sex addiction, do you know they have to keep on doing that therapy continuously? 
गया इसका सिटी स्टॉप्ड कैन यू पुट अनदर बैटरी इन दिस वन मोमेंट यू हैव टू जस्ट गिव मी वन मोमेंट all right so what happens to this individual his senses are drawn the mind gives stories it says one more one for the road one this one one extra one extra one extra you know that one extra keeps you going for a very long time and then you are addicted so in this particular meeting that they go these these addicts which are there who go for the meeting they can't go for an alcoholic anonymous or a drug you know meeting once only they have to keep on going again and again and again and again and again because it is so easy to fall down just one push and the person can fall down and it is a long drawn therapy so can you understand how the mind can give you different situations the mind will tell you just once just one just one can we just try once and that once 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 finishes of that person sex also is exactly like that you know <coughs> the person will say just once just once just once it is a never ending story so that is the reason why pururava is saying my mind was carried away intellect is completely demolished you know the intellect that is there with human beings person cannot think beyond that particular frame at all when a person is driven by that idea that i want to have sex nothing can stop that is the reason why have you seen the rapist they don't stop the rapist don't stop because there is no stop button for that the intellect has left them it doesn't tell them that this is a heinous act this is wrong this is not good same way your intellect will leave you the moment you have started taking drugs the moment you have started drinking it is not going to show you the right path at all your intellect will say it's okay it's okay don't worry don't worry don't worry it will numb you because i allowed my intellect to become dull and because i failed to control my senses the great confusion in the mind did not go away even though urvashi gave herself gave me wise counsel with well spoken words so even if there is another person who is telling you don't do this i am saying it for your own good you will never listen a person will never listen to another person even if that person is saying something nice and say don't do this please so there is a drug addict there is a person who smokes drinks has sex so many things you try telling that person whose mind has been overtaken whose intellect is completely destroyed a person whose senses are out of control you try telling that person something no it doesn't drill down into that person because he has succumbed to his lower being so i hope you understood it is not right to succumb to the lower being remember the higher being is in love with you love pure love can only be found within the higher being which is nothing but the divine lord okay do you all have heard me in this satsang about all the negatives i have to end it with a positive i will tell you something it is not that marriage or having a relationship or sex or anything is bad i'm not saying that god has created it for a sufficient you know purpose it is there for a particular purpose but not for excesses 
not for a continuous desirous kind of a life. You have to use your faculties only when it is needed, not all the time. You should know how to control yourself. Let the higher being in you control your lower being and let the lower being not go out of hand. It is exactly like the horse, a wild horse. You know, you cannot never, never control a wild horse till the time you train it. And then you can have a winning horse. So the upper, the higher bird that is there or what I was saying is your higher self should control the lower self. Then you will be the winner. Okay. So this is what I will do. I will end over here. We have done till verse 16. Bye.